uh, hour two. We've got our we've got our games table set up. So that was step one. That's done and out of the way. So step two is we now need to build our form, right? So it's not going to look like this. It's not going to look like this. We're basically making our own shopping cart that matches the table we want that data to go into, right? So here was the movie form I built. It had title, year, length, URL, and photo. And if I look at my movies table, you can pretty much imagine what that table is going to look like, right? Here's the structure: five fields instead of four. Title, year, length. Can I ask a question? Sure. Can you go and look at the code that you typed in for this database in the SQL folder, or is it now gone? No, it's gone. Okay. So that code doesn't get that script doesn't get saved unless you save it. Now, if you're working through Workbench, if you do it here, there's actually an option in here to save it. So here was actually the code from last summer. It opened up my file where I created my movies table and I actually inserted the first three movies myself through here. So what I can do if I type it and I want to keep it, if you click on save script, it will then save it with the .sql extension. So you could go back and use it later. So if you want, you can use Workbench and save those commands as we do them if you like. I don't think you have that option through here. Um, I don't think it gives you, you could copy and paste it into a text file from here if you wanted to. Okay. So what I want to do is we're going to create a few web pages. We're going to create a movie page, oh, sorry, a game page and a save game page. And I'm going to want to save those into a, uh, a week two folder. Actually, what did we make last week? Did we make week one or lesson one? Lesson, was one. lesson one, okay. So what I'm going to do is open up my file system. I'm going to, going to go into the folder. So go into your Comp 1006 folder that you created last week. and then create a lesson two folder. Make it all lowercase with no spaces. I didn't do a good job here. I actually use an uppercase. And I'm gonna make a Monday folder because I'm teaching the same class again on Wednesday, so I'm gonna have a Monday and a Wednesday folder. You don't need that. So you just need a Comp 1006 lesson two folder. And I'll just call this one Monday in lowercase. So I've got a blank folder. So we're gonna create a couple pages in here to run. So I'm going to open up my PHP Storm code editor. And I'm just going to choose open and I'm going to browse to that folder. So I've got documents. I'll go into my comp, find my comp 1006. I hope if I went into the right folder. in the wrong place. I keep it in OneDrive so it syncs to the cloud. Okay, so I'm in lesson two and here's my Monday folder. So I'm in a blank, I've got a blank So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to create a new file in here. Now I could choose HTML because we're actually not putting any PHP code on here, but I'm still going to use the PHP extension. So this form, we're really just going to have HTML, but if we want to do something like later on, add a drop down for something like genre or publisher, we're going to need PHP code to fill that menu. So it probably makes more sense to just use PHP extension right away and not bother with an HTML. So I'm going to make a new PHP file and I'll call it movie. 
Sorry. I don't know why I called it movie. I'm going to rename that. Actually, I can't rename it through here. I'll just delete that. I'm going to call it game. So today we're going to use this page so that users can add a new game. Later on in a few weeks, if we look here, so notice if I go back to my movies app, when I click add, it gives me movie.php and my page is blank. Yet if I go in and select an existing movie and click edit, notice my URL, it's still loading the same page, but this time that page is populated with all the information about the movie. So we're gonna use our game page today for adding and then in a few weeks we'll look at how we edit, we'll be able to use the same form. We'll just add some code so that when the user wants to edit, we can pre-fill that game with all the information and then the user can change it. Okay, so we're gonna kind of copy this structure. So I'm going to take out my code. I'll put in some basic HTML tags. And WebStorm nicely completes my tags. When I create an opening HTML tag, it creates the closing one for me, which I'm a big fan of. <laughs> I'll try and format it properly by saying my content is HTML. I don't need this tag, but it's a good idea. Just make this a little wider. And we'll give the page a title. So that title will appear right at the top of the browser. If I have multiple tabs open, this tab will say video game details, which is kind of generic because we're going to use this page for both adding new games or editing an existing game. That title is kind of appropriate in either case, right? The pages for video game details. And then under my head, I'll add a body and save my file. <coughs> um, somewhere I want to turn on my line numbering. If I can quickly figure out how to do it, I will. find it later. Mm. Alright, I'll come back. I'll worry about that later. Yep. Show. <laughs> That's a good idea. I'll right click in there and show, show my line numbers. That's going to make it easier for us to talk about a particular section of code if I say look at line number 8. So the first thing we need on here is we need a form tag. Okay. We could put the inputs on our page like our boxes and buttons and drop downs. They'd all show up, but if we don't put those things in a form tag, you can't submit them to the server. So the form isn't visible, it's just our container. So building, asking user for inputs without a form is kind of like going to the grocery store without a cart, taking things off the shelf and throwing them on the floor. <laughs> right? You can grab stuff, but it doesn't go anywhere. So inside my body, we're going to want a form. So whenever we're collecting inputs from users, that has, those inputs have to live together inside of one form. So this is like our grocery cart in the supermarket. Now there's two attributes of a form we'll all, we will always want to set. There are a whole bunch of them. Yeah, as you can see, when I hit space, my code editor prompts me. We're really only interested in two of these. So, Vice Anything, you said, so what attributes are we interested in? Action. We're going to need the action. And notice when I pick action, it actually prompts me for a URL. So what do you suppose the action does? 
what's the point of that attribute? Again, let's think about our process here, right? We're building this page. So what do you suppose that action is going to do? Okay, that's, hang on, that's, we're, that's the other attribute. We'll come to that one in just a second. Right, it, uh, no, it's not going to send it to the database yet. Right, so we're building this page here. What the action is telling the server is what's the name or the URL of the page that's doing the processing or the checkout. It's basically, what, what's the checkout station <laughs> this page goes to? So we need to supply a URL. So we're going to call this page. We haven't built it yet, but this will be the PHP page we do that we'll then save to the database. So we'll call this one save game.php. Again, if you're a big camel case fan, this is, would be where you could use camel case instead, if you like. I prefer this notation. So this is when the user submits this page. That's the URL that's going to load. So the other attribute that Bison mentioned, and Asim, you gave us the right value, we need the method. And when I pick method, Notice I get basically just two choices. I get get or I get post. We can use either one of these. We'll try using both. Which one do we use, are we going to use 99% of the time? 99% of the time we're going to use post. What's the difference between post and get? I, I will ask you this on the midterm. That's a really good guess, and that would be completely logical. But we actually use get or post for sending it to the server, which is not intuitive at all. You know, your answer, you gave me the intuitive answer. Whether or not the PHP query shows in the URL. Is that correct? Yeah. When you send the data via get, the data is visible. When you send through post, it's encrypted. OK, exactly. So when I filled. Let's look at an example here. Let me go to Amazon. We'll pull up their form. Um, so here's a little form here, one text box and a submit button. I guarantee you this form uses get. And if I run a search, how can you tell that their form is using get? It says keyword Right. So whatever I type in this box shows up as part of my URL. If I also want to search my SQL and run it again, notice now both those keywords show up. So this form is using get. Now we only use this 1% of the time. Why for most forms, why do we, what's the problem here? <laughs> Right, let's say this is a login form with username and password. <laughs> if the method is get, when the user clicks it, their username and password will show up in the address bar. So if someone's looking over their shoulder or sitting next to them, or sits down on the computer after them and they haven't cleared the cache or logged out of the computer, those values are going to show up. <laughs> so very rarely do we use get. We'll use it actually in a few weeks. But most of the time when we build forms, we want post because we don't want the stuff that users type in the form to show up in our URL. It's just not secure. Now, which method do you think is the default? If I leave out method equals, if I don't specify it, this would still be valid. My form will still work. If I do it this way, will my form use get or post? The default method is actually get. So this is a really important thing to know when we're building forms. We should always, as soon as you create the form tag, make sure you add in <laughs> method equals post. Because if you don't, by default, your form will use get. And whatever someone types in that form will show up in the address bar. And if it's in the address bar, it will show up in browser history as well. <laughs> OK. So I will probably ask you the difference in, on the midterm. I'm going to ask you what's the difference between post and get. I'm also going to ask you which one is the default. Because <laughs> this is a really important point to remember about forms. 
Why the default isn't post, I don't know. <laughs> but that's how it is, and it's never been changed. So those are really, there's a whole bunch of other attributes of forms. We're only ever going to need one other attribute, and that is when we get fi do file uploads. Later on, we want to add a picture, like the video game cover. Then we'll need to add one other attribute so that this form can also transmit a file when the user sends it. But we're not going to need to do that for a couple months. So there's our form. So we're going to need, basically, we've got four, four fields in our table, right? Name, age, limit, release, and size. We're going to want an input for each one, and we're going to want a label beside it so that the user knows what they're supposed to type in each box. And typically, when I build my forms, I put those inputs in the same order as they are in my database. Just keeps it clean, right? I'm ordering, ordering them the same way. So to group this nicely, what we want is we want a label that says name, and then we want a box beside it. Then underneath, we want a label for um, whatever's next, <laughs> age limit, and the text box beside it. So we want them stacked, label, text box, label, input, label, input, label, input. So we've got a nice HTML tag we can use that's gr that groups these together, which is the field set tag. This w without them, our inputs are going to run across the page. We want them stacked vertically. So I'll create a field set. And then in here, so we'll have four field sets, and each one will have a label and an input box. So I'll put in a label for name, and it'll say name. And then after it, I'll put in an input. And we have to give this input a name attribute. Why should every input have a name attribute? Our form will still run without it, but we're not going to be able to save any of the data. Right? How many inputs are we going to have on this form? Four. Four. So why is it important that each one has a name? <laughs> right, because on the next page, we need to identify which value is which. So instead of calling them you know, input one, input two, input three, we should give them descriptive names. So what's a good naming convention? How should we decide what to call this first input? We could call it game name. That would work. We could call it title. I wouldn't recommend using either of those. I would call it exactly what we call the column in the database that that value is going to go into. right? Because if we call it name in the database, we call it title on our web page, it will still work. But then we have to know that we've called this same value two different things. <laughs> which is a good way to confuse ourselves. So my rule of thumb is whatever the column name is in the database, the input name on the web page is exactly the same. Okay, it takes the guesswork out of it. And same with case sensitivity. If you use camel case here, use camel case for the input on the web page. Use underscores here, use it in both. So I'm going to call it name. I know it's a bit strange, name equals name. <laughs> Now, we could add a type attribute if we want. Here are all the different types of HTML inputs. However, what kind of input should we use? What should we give the user for the name of the game? We, the, what we want is a text box. So we can say type equals text, and that's correct. But we don't need to. Why not? We could leave out the type attribute here. Why can I leave it out? It's default. Right, a single line text box is the default. So we could add type equals text if we need to, but we're really just adding extra HTML that we don't need to our page. So I'm going to leave it out. If I wanted a radio button, well, yeah, we'd need type equals radio. But if we leave it out, we just get a text box. So that's it. Our first field set is done. So we need a few more field sets. So I'll put in a second label. What did we call this one? Age, age limit. So again, I'll name this age underscore limit. 
because it matches exactly the column name in the database. Did you have a question? No? Okay. And then we'll do two more. Again, where everything matches the names in our database. So today we just have text boxes. We'll just let the user type in these values. We'll look at drop down lists next week or the week after. So then our other two columns were called release underscore date and size. So I'm going to call it release underscore date. My last one is size. So this is just grunt work. There's not a lot of brain work going on here. We're just creating this simple form. There's no logic going on here. And maybe up above, we'll just put a heading on. So maybe before my form, I'll just put on an H1 tag with a heading that appears above the form. We don't need to do it. Our app's going to look a little better if we do. So these field sets are all the same. I've just changed the name of each input. So now on our save page, we can uniquely identify each value, and it's got a good descriptive name that matches what's in our database. Sure. So what I want to do now, once this page is saved, I want to upload it and throw it on the web server, load it in the browser, and make sure our form looks OK. And then we got to do one other thing with it. So I'm just going to open up FileZilla. I showed you last week and there's instructions on Blackboard how to save your credentials so you shouldn't have to enter them again. So we should just be able to open up FileZilla, click on our little site manager icon and again all the instructions for this are on Blackboard and if I click DreamHost it should just connect me automatically. Right? I didn't have to log in, my credentials are already saved in here. <coughs> So I'm going to open my public folder, which is this one. For you, your public folder will be GC, your student number, dot computer studies. And we made this comp 1006 folder last week. So I'll go into it. And last week you made a lesson one folder. So now I want you to make a lesson two folder. So you just need to right click in the white space and choose create directory and create a lesson two folder. Keep it all in lowercase with no spaces. Or you can choose create directory and enter it. So after the directory is built, it'll open that folder automatically. So I need to create a folder in here for myself. I don't have a lesson two folder, so I'm just going to create a new directory and call it lesson two. And then I'm going to make a Monday folder, which you guys don't need. So I'll create a Monday directory. And I want to try out my form in here. So I'm connected to the server. Now I need to find my file on my local file system on the left. So I'll browse to my lesson two folder and my Monday. So here's game.php. I'm just going to drag it up to the server. which is not so super fast at the moment. Okay. 
this does happen occasionally where when a whole bunch of us try to connect to the same server, the network sometimes doesn't like this very much. Uh, we can also try, I'm going to see what happens if I try on the wired network. Sometimes that makes a difference. You guys do have Ethernet ports. I'm going to plug in. We'll see if that makes a difference. I'm going to disable my wireless connection. They should have it open on the Ethernet. So once I connected with a cable, I can upload. <laughs> so you may have to plug your machine in to try. Now, if you're working locally, which hopefully we'll talk about today, that'll save you this, the trouble. So if I want to try my page in the browser, I'm going to grab this URL. So I'm going to leave off home and G the first GCR Freeman. I'm going to start at the second one, GCR Freeman Computer Studies, Comp 1006, Lesson 2. And for me, I have my Monday folder. I'll just copy that part of my URL. I'll open up a new tab. So here's my form. So it looks okay. We've got our labels. We've got our text boxes we can type in. There's one more thing our form's going to need. What's missing? Yeah, there's no way for the user to actually send this stuff to the server. I can type in the box, but I can't do anything. <laughs> so after we've got a form, at the bottom, users expect to see a button they can click that will submit it to the server. So we're going to need to add that. So under my last field set, I'm going to put on a button. <coughs> now notice there's two, there's a few different types of buttons. A button type, a reset type, and a submit type. What do you think? They're, I'll give you a hint. They're all going to look the same. I could choose any one of these, and my button's going to look exactly the same to the user in the browser. What's the difference between a button, a reset, and a submit? If they look the same, they all behave differently. What's the difference? Would submit send the data and reset would clear the whole form? Yep. So submit will actually run the get or post to our action. It will send it and load that page. Okay. Reset keeps the user on the page. It just wipes out any inputs they've entered. So what the heck is a button? <laughs> You got it. So buttons, if we said type equals button, the button will show up and the user can click it, but by default nothing happens. <laughs> we have to write code and tell the page what should happen. So a common use of buttons, we don't actually use them very much. Most applications I've built, we don't have that first button. Typically we're used if we want buttons as navigation, like we have a next and a previous. We're not submitting data to the server. We're not clearing a form. We're basically using buttons as navigation. So the user can simply go. So in that case, we would just write some JavaScript that would direct the user to a different page, forwards or backwards. We don't use them a lot. One of the good ways to make users angry is put in button type equals button and put that on your form. Because then they spend all day filling out the form and they click the button at the bottom and what happens? Nothing. <laughs> So make sure when we've got our form, we have at least one submit button. And we'll just put in the text as save, right? That's what our button will say. So we'll save that. I'll upload it. By the way, you can set FileZilla so it doesn't prompt you every time do you want to overwrite this. If you say always yes, this will go away. This is a big waste of time to have to click OK to this 100 times while you're working on a website. When you first log into FileZilla and overwrite a file, the very first time that prompt will come up. But if you check Always Apply, then it won't for that session. 
So now I get my save button. What's gonna happen when I click save? Will our data get saved to the database? Yeah, what URL is it gonna look for? It's gonna look for savegame.php, which does not exist. So what is the browser gonna show us when I click save? Yeah, what kind of error? Somebody said it. Yeah, we're gonna get a 404, which is an HTTP status code for page not found, the most common. We'll look at how to handle 404 errors later in the term, right? What do we do if the user types in a URL that's not part of our website? How do we handle that? Deepak, go <clears throat> Sorry? It doesn't prompt until you try to upload it. Okay. It lets you save it. It's when you upload it and that file already exists that it will say, do you want to overwrite? If the file doesn't exist, you won't get that prompt. It's only when you're copying a file with the same name as a version on the server. So when I click save, <clears throat> It's actually working properly, right? This is the result we should get. It's posted that data, it's tried to load, save game. We're just getting an error because we haven't built that page yet. As soon as we build save page and upload it to the server, this error is gonna go away and our save page is gonna load. Now I wanna show you the difference between post and get. You don't have to do this on yours, but watch what happens. Remember I said how important that method equals post attribute is? Watch what happens if I take it out. So if I don't specify that the method is post, <coughs> I've just left that out. So I need to refresh my form, right? Oh, right, I do have an extra quote there. Got to take one more of those out. It's great to have 30 people debugging your code for you. It's awesome. <laughs> So let me refresh. So my method is gone. I haven't specified post in this case. So it still goes to the right page. It goes to my action. However, all of my form values are here. Now there are times when this is useful and typically we saw we used it on Amazon for searching. So later in the term, we'll add a keyword search into the, our database and we'll use get for that part so that the user can change the search results and we haven't lost the search terms, right? If I want to do this. Here I've used get because I'm also specifying what kind, an or or an and search. So we'll do this later. But this is what happens. Imagine this page was username and password. And I left out that method equals post. Those usernames and passwords are going to get printed in plain text to the browser, which is not good. So we're always going to want to make sure, unless I specify otherwise, make sure we've got method equals post. As soon as we type that form tag, it should be automatic. We put it in there. <coughs> I'll also just show you the button. So if I leave this attribute out, if I forget and I just put in a button, again, you don't have to change it. This is just so you can see what happens. So now it doesn't say type equals submit on my button. When I click it, interesting. I didn't expect that to submit. I guess, sorry, I guess type equals submit is the default. If I pad it in as type equals button, now nothing should happen when I refresh it. Right, so now it doesn't do anything. So make sure we're choosing type equals submit and not type equals button, or nothing happens unless we code it. Would you use type equals button for Ajax when you're doing like some sort of that would be one reason, yes. That would be one possibility that we want to we want to run a script with JavaScript. We don't want to submit the whole page. That would be a good use of button type, for sure. Okay. Any other questions about our form? So our form's done. We don't have to make any other changes here.
So our next step is we're going to want to look at building the save page. Yes, that you know what for for best formatting we could also give our inputs an ID. So in in which case I would use the same ID and name property. So yes, you're probably right that not only for the PHP to work we just need the name attribute, but for proper formatting I should probably give these an ID as well. Yeah, for HTML5 using the label. So I don't need these attributes, but it's probably a good idea. Thank you for mentioning that. And I'll just give the ID and the name the same, because they're used in different ways. Still can't connect. Do you have an Ethernet cable? No, so this could be an HTML file if we wanted it to be. Later on, though, we want to do some other things with it that we're going to need PHP for. So what we don't want to have to do is then change the extension, because if we have links to it... So one of the things we're going to want to do later, if you notice this application, notice I've got a header, and this is a shared header. So it's one header file that's linked to all my pages. I need PHP for that. So later on, to link the header in, I'm going to want PHP. Another thing we're going to want to do, I didn't do it here, but if we want to add a field like some of the, some other, other students suggested adding fields like publisher or rating or genre, we'll want those to be in a drop-down list, right? Like this one. We'll want those drop-downs to come from the database. We'll want a list of publishers in the database or a list of genres. If we're going to populate these drop-downs this way, we'll need to use PHP. So if we need PHP to do it, the page needs a PHP extension. So you're absolutely right. We really don't need a PHP extension for this today. But my suggestion is if you're building a PHP application, I would create all the pages with PHP extensions. So if you want to add code to them later, you don't have to change those extensions, which might break a whole bunch of links. Easiest thing is just use a PHP extension no matter what. So I don't think I'm going to build any pages the whole term. I'm never going to use .htm or .html as an extension. It's just more scalable moving forward we can add. Make sense? Okay, any other questions about our form or what we're doing here? There's some very good questions. No, I suppose we don't. Honestly, I didn't realize it was going to run it that way. So we could leave that attribute out. Yeah, you don't need the type equals submit because just like our text boxes, the default is type equals text. On our button, the default is type equals submit. So I suppose to be consistent, I could just take that out. Sure, good question, good point. Thank you for making my code better. <laughs> Appreciate that. Okay, so it's 10 to 5. Why don't we take a pause here? We're done with our page, and when we come back, we're going to need to do a couple things. We're going to need to talk about how our page connects to the database, so how this process happens. We're going to do a little exercise kind of separately to deal with database connections first, and then we'll build our save page. Then once that's working, we should be able to add some video games and put four or five records in our database. We'll get all that done before we leave today. Okay, so we'll take 10 minutes. We'll come back at 5 o'clock.